That's this is pretty formal, right? <laughs> it feels very formal. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna wear my glasses this time, so if I mess up reading, I don't have an excuse. Welcome back to Say It Slate. We're here with Trinity V Tuck from RuPaul. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me back. So, <laughs> yes, it's so great to have you back. We had to like once we found out they're gonna be in Austin. Okay, so you guys might know Trinity Tuck from RuPaul's Drag Race, but I hear you've had other appearances on shows like The Botched. I, have you been on anything else? Yes, I've been on many things. I've been on three seasons of Drag Race, Celebrity Drag Race, a scripted show on Netflix called AJ and the Queen. I've been on Drag Me to Dinner, which is on Hulu. I have been on Botched, and I actually have a funny story about that, too, with a fan. And then I just finished filming a new TV show. I can't say what it's going to be about, but it's another reality show, not Drag Race related. Really? And um, I just released a new movie on Tubi. It's a Tubi original called Slay, and it's about four drag queens who... Basically, go to this gig in the middle of nowhere, and there's vampires. So it's like a oh. horror comedy. Okay. So I think gonna... Death Till Dawn and Priscilla Queen of the Dead. It's so good. I was going to say, do you survive? <laughs> well, you'll have to watch and see. You'll have to watch and find out. Oh, but the botched thing. So um, years ago, right after I filmed that botched episode, I was doing a gig, and I had to Uber from the hotel to the venue. And this lady picked me up, and she's like, you look really familiar. And I was thinking, okay, girl, you're going to think you're going to say drag race. And she's like, Oh, you were on that show botched. And I'm like, out of everything that I have done, <laughs> you know me from botched, which was hilarious. But, um, yes, I was on botched. I, I, I feel bad for bringing it up. But when I was talking to my partner about it, he's like, yeah, she was on botch. I'm like, why well, I feel bad. I was that, like, was a, wait, what? that was an acting thing. That wasn't even a real thing. You didn't have anything done? No. Oh, because you're all body. Oh, that's like, so it made me question everything about you. I was like, wait. Oh, I've had a lot of things done. Yes. <laughs> question everything about me. Oh, okay. I was like, who is she really? I don't know. No one knows. I don't even know. <laughs> Well, again, we're so happy to have you back on Say It, Slay It. And this episode, we're going to be talking more about your entrepreneurial journey uh, that you're on currently. So jumping right into things, you have this album that's releasing on, uh, what is it, June 1st? June 1st, yes. The yeah. Seven Deadly Sins. Um, I hear it's what, got a couple surprises up its tuck, so to speak. Uh, c- care to tell us exactly what we should expect? Sure. So the album is called Cinematic, and it you're right, it's themed after the Seven Deadly Sins, so there's seven songs. Each represent a different sin. It has a really cool, dancey vibe, a little dark pop. And the producer, Drew, Drew Lewis, I have worked with him before, but not with serious music. Like we did my um, Trinity Ruins Christmas, the musical, okay. which is also can be and fun. Mm-hmm. But this was like real music. So he really pushed me to actually sing which I've never had vocal training, so girl, I'm no Mariah. But he did get me to sound really good, and and all the background vocals and everything is me. So um, he did great, plus, you know, auto-tune. But it's a fun album. Um, I really wanted to do something surrounded religion, kind of, because I grew up Southern Baptist, and I have, like, a very tumultuous relationship with religion. And um, it was kind of my, like, I don't know. I, I What are you digging for? My chapstick. Oh, okay. That's kind of weird, right? <laughs> I was like, right. is that chapstick or are you just, you know, happy to see me? Both. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're sick. So, so you're, you're, you said your album was based on the Seven Deadly Sins. You really wanted to do something that was almost sounds satanic. But then you have like people are accusing you of being satanic a few years ago, right? Uh, you know, that's fine. You know, and what is Satan? Yeah. What What is religion? And all, girl, what I have learned, I, I turned 40 this year. Mm. What I have learned in the 40 years, if somebody accuses you of something and you can't get away from that, even if it's untrue, girl, lean into it, make it, make merch out of it. You know, who cares? 
if you take the power away from the people that are accusing you or like people who are like not you know not all christians are negative obviously but there are a lot of christians who use religion as a weapon and mm-hmm. and if they're saying you're going to hell then girl use that yeah use it. take but, the power away from them do, but do you really feel that way like that you like went from the religion to a satanic side like people were saying or oh just, no or i i i what they're throwing I am. I would say that I am agnostic. I believe in the higher power of some sort. Um, I just don't know what that is. Yep. Um, definitely don't really believe in the devil or anything like that. That's crazy. Um, I believe. But you play the inner, devil, huh? You play the devil though. Because it's all camp. It's, <laughs> it's, it's all camp. It's all. I'm just kidding. You did such a great job. Thanks. It's all like you know. It's all a a way to throw back at the people who throw that in your face. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So speaking about loud personalities, which we we really enjoy with you, you're one of the nicest people that I know. So it's like really hard to say that. <laughs> but so you're all over the world. You're on TV, music videos, cities all over. But are you on Twitter? Oh, I am not on Twitter. Well, I no, yes, I am. So I just created a new Twitter account, which I'm not going to tell anybody what it is because it's not going to be a Trinity Twitter. Oh, okay. It's just so I can look at porn. <laughs> and um, my my the thing that I miss the most about Twitter, but um, my actual Trinity Twitter got banned because I told um, Caitlyn Jenner to throw herself in front of a bus. And apparently that is, um, you know, What's causing violence or something. I'm like, girl, I didn't say I would do it. I just, it was a suggestion. So <laughs> you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. You know, but it's maybe he would like you if you did. <laughs> but anyway, it all came about because she is a terrible person. And she yeah. was like, who is like a trans person who's transphobic is like, that sounds like some Dr. Seuss dark bullshit if I ever heard of my life. It, it is a little crazy to completely isolate yourself from the community and then speak as a member of the community at the same time. Yeah. Isn't that bizarre? And like what's crazy is when she first came out, our community was supportive of her. Mm-hmm. And she had her show, I Am Kate, and everybody was loving it and, and supporting that. And then, girl, she just took a turn, honey. She did. She did. So, okay. So speaking of travel, <laughs> trying to roll back to that. So we know your, your travel is kind of chaotic. So traveling as a drag queen, I know we talked about this before, but it seems you're on a full ass tour now, right? So you're in Dallas, you're in Austin today, you're in LA tomorrow, you're in Palm Springs after. Are we missing anything? Oh girl, if you, if you blink, I am gone. I will work. If you, if somebody has money, I am there. There's few things that I will do at a quickness, food, Dick and money. Those three are my vices for sure. What's your favorite place to go to? Oh, my favorite place to go to. Are you talking about like an actual city or a to an work. establishment? Let's say the, the, the favorite city to work in, so probably establishment. Okay, favorite city to work would be L.A. because um, there's tons of work, there's tons of dick, and there's tons of food. And what about just for pleasure? My favorite city on earth is Cape Town. Cape Town. South Africa. Oh, it's yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. It's super cheap. It's right in between mountains and the ocean. And I would I would retire there. It's absolutely beautiful. So I, I, I still don't understand, like, for people that are following along, like, how you manage it all. So you're doing drag performances. You're representing your Servaka. Um, you're in movies. You're in shows. You're, you're doing all these things. How? How do you do it? Is it your manager completely running your life, or? How- well, I think for someone who is as busy as I am with my schedule, you have to. You can't rely on people. You you have to be a boss. You know, you have to know everything that's happening. You have to time manage. You have to plan things out. And then also have a management company that helps you with that because you can't do it all by yourself, but you have to be on top of it yourself. 
Um, because if you if you don't know what's going on, a management company can only set things up for you. Right. Um, so I think a combination of my team as well as just being on top of like what's next. Okay, I know that this is what's happening. I have to start this or I have to get ready for this. Have you ever had anything go wrong and like how to recover? Oh, absolutely. Stuff happens all the time. That's the name of the game of, of show business or any kind of fast paced um, working environment is, is things are bound to go wrong. Like today, you know, I didn't get into like an hour before I'm supposed to be at this podcast. And so here we are, we are 30 minutes late, but we're going to make it work. Uh, but you know, that's just part of it. You've got to roll with the punches and be as professional as possible and, um, do what you can to appease people when you make mistakes. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine if I was in your shoes and I like missed one flight, like the the effect that it would have i almost missed my flight into texas yesterday into dallas because my connection in atlanta there was tornado warnings and they just like shut down the airport like everything was delayed and delayed by like three hours so i got in and was rushing to get ready for that too but you know you gotta just do what you gotta do like it and if you miss a flight because of whatever, you're going to have to reschedule. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> you seem to let nothing get in your way. So it seems like you're going really fast. Do you have any plans to slow down at all? I think I'll sleep started? when I'm dead. You know, yeah. I I want to make money. I grew up really, I don't want to say like dirt poor, but we were not well off at all. Like we were, we were pretty poor. And so... That's always like in the back of my mind, even even when I make really good money. Scary. I, it, I'm just like, oh, I've got to keep making money because you you don't want to re- revert back to that. So um, I I will I'm a workhorse. I will work if there's something offered and, and the fee is right. I will do it. I'll never turn down good work. Love that. But so you you think you're really going the, like the same speed? You're going to be picking up, or you're just as, as much as you possibly can take? Oh, I can take a lot. <laughs> um, but with drag, I I'm too used to TV money now, where I would never go back to what I was making before I got on Drag Race. So if in the, you know it's just like modeling and acting and singing, eventually that will happen. One of these are free if you want one. Oh, thank you actually have water it's actually not water it's vodka oh. and um juice because i was like i need to just get ready so but it looks like water it does look like water i still water i was like i was like that's you do you own a water brand and <laughs> mm-hmm. they get into the, the water business no that's like, why it's not up here if i had a water brand it would be sitting up here <laughs> and the what is this was pg would be pg gone. would be gone bitch yes yeah. No, if I, I'm very big about that, girl. If if I have a brand deal, yes, ma'am. Well, I don't know. I really expect you to be, like, dressed up, you know, as one of the characters from your music video. And uh, Oh, were you? I'm not, I'm not seeing that happening today. Especially no, you're not. thought I was going to be a preacher. Yeah, well, I thought you were going to be dressed up, too. Right. Okay. So Let's here go. we are. So here we are. Two so catfishes. We, started, we catfished I, each other. We did catfish each other. We did. We're retarded back here. So we had, you know, did you see yourself slowing down or are you just getting started? You were talking about how, you know, if there's money to be made, you will make it. Yeah, I I think that I'm going to continue to do this until the TV money is not here. Um, I'm I'm too used to that now. So I would never go back to what I was making before. And when that happens, because just like any other career in the this kind of business, it will eventually slow down and I'll pivot and do something else. Do you think you're going to get into the business when you said you were going to help drag queens like make their own attire? Do you remember that? Yeah, I I would be interested in doing more stuff with yeah. other drag queens. I, I like the creative side of drag, so I will always be somehow involved, but I, as far as like performing and stuff, I... Mm-hmm. I probably won't do that as much. So we shouldn't expect like a Trinity to talk, talk show or yes. a fall show. We should yes. Come if that gets offered to me, that's more <laughs> than the money, bitch. Of course. 
I'll be just like RuPaul, 800 years old, still doing drag. You know, my face will be pinned back with staples. And I'll have a makeup artist and I will look gorgeous. And I will own a mansion in Beverly Hills just like Miss Mama RuPaul. Trust. I didn't even realize that RuPaul was actually that old or wise until I started seeing some of the, the videos of his younger self like surfacing lately. Uh, like, oh, um, boys, this one's been around for a minute. RuPaul is not a spring chicken. <laughs> she looks amazing, though. Yeah. And um, any drag queen can only hope to have half the career that she has had. I mean, like, that that woman is, uh, th- that is the epitome of a boss. Like, yeah. you want to talk about somebody that is a multimillionaire based off of working hard and, like, literally working in the gutters to get to where she's at. Like, she would do whatever she had to. She was a hustler. Like, you know what I mean? She was pushing the streets to at, uh, way late at night, I just saw something where she was like interviewing um like prostitutes just just as kind of like what you're doing right now <laughs> and uh, it, and it just she kept building on it with different things and trying different things till it worked and yeah girl here she is against all odds absolutely yeah so w- with that what advice would you give someone that's wanting to get into the entertainment industry the last time you said don't do it yeah, I would say, um, you know, join the casting couch. That's a quick and easy way to get your way to the top or bottom. Did you do the casting couch? No, I was giving that away for free, honey. No, I was having to pay people. To... <laughs> no, um, no, I, I, I think follow your heart. If, if you really want to do something, you, you don't want to have regrets later in life. So if something is meant for you, it's going to happen. And if it's not meant for you, then at least you tried. You At least you tried it out. And then you can move on to something else if it doesn't work out. But you should never do something because you're scared or you don't think it's going to happen. Pursue it. And then, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I really believe that. I really believe the universe puts you in the right place at the right time as it should happen. I, I agree with you, and I, I think we can think of, like, RuPaul and even yourself, like, were you ever at that place where you felt like you were ready to give up before, like, an opportunity happened for you? Yeah, I mean, drag. I, I was ready to quit drag. When I when I got cast on Drag Race, I told myself if I don't get, because this was my third time auditioning, and I was like, if I don't get on, I'm, girl, I'm done. I, I want to do something else. And I uh, got on. And so here I am, miserable, making <laughs> lots of money. <laughs> no, but yeah, definitely. There's been times where I, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted, and and no matter how much effort, and you just have to keep pushing because it, you're going to get a thousand no's. It only takes one yes. Absolutely. How do you keep yourself from getting burned out? You're going to get burned out. You just have to keep going you know if you want something like hard enough you're gonna just do whatever it takes you know even when you're burnt out you're gonna keep going and that's why a lot of people that's why this industry is not meant for everybody because a lot of people can't handle that and a lot of people do give up and they do get burnt out and you know then they stop pursuing it and the people that are just bosses that just push through no matter what eat ramen you know sleep in their car whatever they got to do you know if i don't know if you ever seen like these stories of these major stars have like some very humble beginnings Mm -hmm. and you know you have to do what you have to do absolutely yeah have you ever what would you recommend to somebody that's like maybe blaming someone else Uh, they're not taking responsibility for their own path that happens a lot. And that's not just in this career. That's in life. People don't want to take accountability for their own life choices. And that's bizarre to me. Those people, this is this is not a advice for those people because those people are narcissists and they're never going to take responsibility for their own actions. This is for the, this is advices for people that are around those people. Avoid them at all costs. 
You you do not need them in your life if they cannot take accountability for how they are in their own way. They're gonna drag you down with them. So stay far away. That's great. That's great advice. <laughs> So speaking of advice, I didn't give you any advice. So let's talk about All Stars for a second. Okay. Who do you think should just give up and go home? From, oh, the new All Stars 9? Yeah. yeah. Give up and go home. Well, I don't think anybody should give up and go home because no one, no one's getting eliminated. So, and it's all for charity. So they should all stay because I'm sure everyone's charity is going to make money. But who has the least chance to win? Is that what yeah. you're asking? If somebody had to go. I know they're all not being eliminated. If somebody had to go, I would say Plastique. Really? Because she's too pretty, and she already has a major following on TikTok. That bitch just has to do videos, and she can make Buku Bank money from sponsors. She don't need the show, so she can go. I don't know. That that was too nice. We're getting rid of somebody because they're already famous. Well, they're all, all famous. Oh, yes. They're all all famous. They all are fantastic. I think the person who... I will say this entire cast is interesting to me because when I first look at them collectively, I don't see, like... It doesn't seem like a winner's cast. Like, like I don't see... so Other than Roxy. Roxy is the person that stands out the most to me as, like, a winner. Uh-huh. And this is no shade to any of the girls. I just, I've seen them on their seasons before. And so unless they've grown, all of them have major weaknesses. And so, um, yeah, I sent them all fucking home. <laughs> so is Roxy your pick for a winner? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I think she is like a drag queen's drag queen. She is phenomenal with hair, makeup. She's a phenomenal performer. She sews. She's well liked. She's put in her dues. So uh, she's a little bit of a bitch. She's a little bit of a sweetheart. Um, I think she also has like a really great story arc with how evil she was on her original season and how she grew from that. I think that um, that's a great example of somebody that has made mistakes in their past, not defined by their mistakes, and moved on. And better themselves. Yeah, I, I think she's definitely um, a badass bitch. But I, I, when it comes to the nice side, do you think she would be nice as you to help someone sew? Yeah, really. I think that Roxy is she's a pageant queen, and the one thing about true pageant queens that are successful at it, when you're competing, you can help somebody else. Yeah, just because you help put a stitch in somebody else's outfit. Don't mean they're even going to beat you. Right. You know, if you are that good and you're that confident, girl, help everybody. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody's going to mess up, they're going to mess up on their own. Look at All Star 7. Jinx, even with my help on both of her outfits, they were still horrible. You know, and I could only do what I could do. And she knows that that's not her gig. You know, she slayed everything else. And, And so that wasn't meant for her. Yeah, you're right. I, I wasn't ready for you to like a, to continue add more hot glue. I was like, oh, she's gonna definitely put a seam in this. For- <laughs> oh, girl, she had so already. You've already started it. She already started it, girl. What do you do? You can't just rip it off and and start sewing over a hot glue. So you just gotta hot glue more. Yes, yes, ma'am. That's you no. Know. And Those- there's nothing wrong with sewing with hot glue, and yeah. it's not really sewing if you're hot gluing, but. You know, I've made some fierce outfits with hot glue before I knew how to sew. Yeah. Oh, it was just, it was just a great moment for me. It was yeah. Great. I was like, oh, I was like, there, she's going to help her sew that. So, no, <laughs> I, no, just, she already started, sweetie. We're going to, we're going to finish what you started. I'm just going to make it a little less terrible. No, I love that. Okay. So not to bring up past drama. Okay. Maybe to bring up past drama just a little bit. So last time we spoke about pheromone. How how are things going with her these days? I don't know her. Oh, she's still out. I don't know her. Pheromone? Who's <laughs> that? Farah? The only Farah I know is the, the famous Farah from the 70s, Farah Fawcett. Okay. Pheromone, never heard of her. Don't know what she looks like. Um, On a real note, Farah is fierce. 
You know, she's a fierce queen. She's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm sure she is a good person to her friends. Um, but no, I don't think we've not repaired anything and I don't really care to. No. Okay. So I, I wish her well on her endeavors. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing my own thing and she's doing her own thing. Is there anybody else that we're writing off? Oh, I've written off a lot of people. Sure. Just like I'm sure people have written me off, you know, I don't deal well with bullshit and, um, I tend to, once you cross me like that and it's something serious, I, I can wish you well and I can even work with you, but I'm, I'm just not interested. I'm not interested. And with Farah, she's absolutely stunning and I wish her well. I really honestly do. Um, but I don't think we'll ever be friends. Mm. So switching uh, directions again, I wonder if some of these things are inspiring you for your new album, again, that comes out on June 1st. Yes. So make sure that you pre-save. And what inspiration for you was, did you have based on this of Nidley Sins? And where where did you pull that inspiration? Oh, each song is something completely different. So the first song that we released, which is um, Till Death Becomes Us featuring Juju B., that was based off of Death Becomes Her, which is a huge movie from the 90s, um, iconic, you, probably before your time. Have you ever seen it? Nope. Wow, you're a bad gay. <laughs> um, but it, the, the premise of that movie is two frenemies, and they're jealous of each other. And um, so envy is one of the sins. And so that was the theme that I wanted for Till Death Becomes Us, and you can watch that music video out now on my YouTube. It has over 150,000 views now, so keep watching. Go subscribe. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really great. You, yeah. you definitely went all out on the production. That's oh, girl, I'm going to have to do three more <laughs> tours just to pay off that damn video. <laughs> it was amazing. So which, which deadly sin do you identify with the most? Oh, probably... Um, lust why um i just think that's a big part of humans is sexuality and um i love the song um give it up on my album it's based off of adam and eve but in a much sluttier version of course and um yeah i just, I just think lust is a as is a all sins are really fundamentally human mm -hmm. if you look at all of the sins you, if no matter if you're religious or not you you if you can't get away from those sins you're human awesome. you everyone um experiences those all of those sins plus more um every day and i think lust is especially in our community is one of the biggest ones hello grinder <laughs> <laughs> yeah grinders scruff uh, sniffies Sniffy. Yeah, but that's the one. What's your favorite song on the album? My favorite song on the album is um, Give It Up. That's my favorite one. I like the vibe of it. It's a, it's not as dark sounding, even though if you listen to the lyrics, it is kind of dark. Um, it's got a smooth current disco vibe. It's sexy. Um, it kind of reminds me of something that um, what is his name would sing? Um, not Jason Derulo. What is the other guy? Jason oh, anyway, there's another young singer I can't think of right now. Um, but it kind of gives me that current disco vibe. I like it. I just think it's like a cool like vibe. And actually, my favorite song that's going to be on the album total is a new song that will be released on the deluxe version, um, which I record this coming week. But the demo is fire. It is fierce. It's called Six Six Sex. What's it about? Exactly yeah, well, about. sex and <laughs> Six Six Six. <laughs> um, it's straight semi. It, it's it's based the the music video is going to be based around um, these Catholic schoolgirls. Think the craft. And 
they're virgins and they're they're wanting to lose their virginity and nothing's working. So they are going to summon the demons to, you know, get them a hot man. That sounds hot. Yeah. That's <laughs> So are there any surprise features like Juju being your first release till Death Become Us? No, Juju is the only feature on the original, the initial album. There is going to be a surprise feature for the deluxe. Okay. But you'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. And then the 666 is actually going to be an introduction of a drag girl group. So there'll be four of us featured on that. Oh, song. wow. Yeah. Okay. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. And when should we expect that to come out? I'm not sure yet. I think that's definitely going to be later in the summer, if not fall. Okay. So just wait and see. So maybe like July, August, September-ish. Yeah, stay subscribed. Yeah. Okay, so can we ask about the financing? What's that look like to create an album and music videos? Because it looks like what you're doing is pretty expensive. Oh, girl, you're, you're, this is an investment. You are looking at, if you want to do it right, an album can easily, and this is just like a ballpark. I don't even, I don't even know, like all the top of my head. Each song is probably twenty five hundred to three thousand each. Plus, if you want it, a music video, girl, that ranges. So, like, I've spent the cheapest would be like seven thousand. Mm-hmm. The most expensive would be like forty thousand. Really? For one video. Yeah. I was like, you have all these dancers and Yeah, well, and everybody gets paid. Yeah. I pay everybody. So <laughs> everyone gets paid. You pay your dancers, I love it. Yes. Not everybody does. Yeah. Now there have been some my earlier music videos for the extras. Girl, that was back in the day. I didn't pay extras then um, because there were extras. They were just like in it and, and I got volunteers. It was, everybody knew what was happening. You know, we paid for lunch for everyone. We're, we gave them credit in the videos. But after a certain point, I was like, you know what? I'm in a much better place financially. And if I am spending this much money on a project, I need to set aside funds to pay even extras. Mm-hmm. So... At a certain point, years ago, I started doing that. Because I have like eight music videos at this point. Mm-hmm. So maybe halfway through, I I was like, you know what? I really need to start setting aside this because um, even though the, these fans were so gracious and lovely to um, you know help out and donate their time because they just wanted to be part of it, I I wanted to, to pay everyone for sure. Yeah. I, I, I can imagine that everybody wants to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You know, I, I don't it, – it's, it's not fun when you're on a set and the director or whomever is just an asshole. Mm-hmm. But I try to keep my, my set lighthearted. I let people, you know, have fun. Everybody – everything that we do, everyone has to sign off on. Like if, if they're comfortable or not to do it, consent is super important. And um, I want people to have a good time. Yeah, it, it seems like it, it really does. I and mean, I, I can't say like how excited I am for you as a as a queer person. It's been you know so hard to bring attention to your art. Um, you're you're such a down to earth person. I've I personally witnessed it here, and when I visited you in Orlando, um, you're just like this, the sweetest person ever. And if anyone should have the attention, I definitely think it's you. Thank um, you. I, I want to thank you so much for making the time to come out and visit with us today. And before we close, I just want to talk about your. Serve Vodka brand. So if you can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Yeah, so Serve Vodka is a queer owned and operated vodka brand that recently came out a couple of years ago. And it has right now it has six queens. They might be adding to that lineup. But you can go to shopservedvodka.com to see what flavors there are. They can you can order it online and have it shipped to you. But it is being brought to many states now, and um, it's right here in Austin. So I'm, I'm going to be doing some um, meet and greets today just for the vodka. And my flavor is mixed berries. I love it because I like stuff that's fruity. When I'm out drinking, I'm a vodka girl, and I like it with either cranberry or Sprite or watermelon Red Bull. Ooh. Yeah, that's so great. It's so good. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And okay, so at the end of every episode of Say It, Slay It, 
What do we say? Say it slant? I'm just kidding. Well, I don't know. What do, it just what meant do we to say? throw you off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you know that Wiss offers DoxyPep, the morning after pill for STDs? Doxy is a regimen that used doxycycline, a safe, commonly prescribed antibiotic, to reduce chances of contracting an STD after unprotected sex encounters. But being proactive about your sex role health helps keep rates of STDs in, in your community and keeps you healthy. In clinical trials, the patients assigned a male at birth taking doxypelp reduced the chance of acquiring syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia by about two thirds and when taking within 24 hours, so no longer than 72 hours. And that you can get at wisp.com. Use my code MATICUSX for 15% off. And that's true. Like, I don't know about you, but yeah. doxy is have you right. Before? Of course I have. I'm a whore. <laughs> Where do you get yours from? Um, I go to a local uh, queer clinic in Orlando called Pineapple Healthcare. Oh, I love the name. Yeah. And that's where I get tested. That's where I get my prep. That's where I get doxy. Um, they also are, are great with other stuff because it's an actual physician. So mm-hmm. you can get any kind of treatment, yeah. not just sexual health, gotcha. which is super important. But um, they do everything. Girl, right now I'm having to be on vitamins because apparently I'm old and I um, am lacking some of those things. Oh, I, I feel you. I think the, the really exciting part, of, the exciting part for like WIS that I thought for me was that you didn't have to go in and visit like an actual provider. You can you go meet with them online. I know a lot of people are so embarrassed, and instead of like going to meet with somebody, they'll just continue to spread the infection. Wow. That's just, this is so, uh, you know, so I think this is what is really helpful. You still have to p- p- pick this prescription up, um, but you could just, you know, skip that provider visit. Yeah. Keep that gift that keeps on giving. We don't want that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Trini. Really appreciate you. And I hope you have fun at your bottle signing. I thought I was special and got a single bottle, but I guess everybody gets one. No, you, you <laughs> got, you got it early. I did. I thank you so much for giving this to me. And I, I actually tried to buy a bottle here in Austin, and they weren't the closest one available was Houston. So now I'm glad to hear that they were here. Yeah, in Bill Austin, so that's really exciting. You're gonna get to have your own. Again. Now I can actually drink this one. You can actually drink it. Yeah. You need to come out tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna be out. Okay, good. Yeah, I will. Good. Perfect. All right. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs>